name? Glenn R. Jones. And where do you live, Glenn? I live at 30 Dusty Highway, Argyle, New York. And where'd you live when you lived in Hoosick Falls? Well, first I was I was born here at the health center and I lived at 32 Cary Avenue. And then uh, after the war, I bought a place up on High Street. And since then, that back then, uh, I moved, I sold it, and I moved away, and my that burned down up there. And now my my niece lives in that locality on the same lot, and she built a house there. Yeah. What was her name? Her name is uh, Gwendolyn Wright. Gwendolyn Wright. Oh, yeah. Gil Wright's the historian for the mm -hmm. town right now. Yeah. Oh yeah. All right now. What did you uh, do before 1943? Where did you go to school? I went to school here at, uh, at Hoosick Falls, and I uh, went through my third year. And I didn't graduate, but I always claimed that I went on my senior trip during the Second World War. I see. Because uh, before that, I worked for Alex Holcomb uh, for 20 cents an hour up to the uh, Sacconi Station here in uh, Hoosick Falls. And it'd be on the corner of uh, Church and River Street. I see. And uh, you you enlist you enlisted or joined the Merchant Marine. You told me. Uh, would you tell us about that? Well, I joined the Merchant Marine in 19, 1943. Um, I turned uh, when I was 17. I turned 18 in boot camp in Sheepshead Bay, Brooklyn. I uh, did my basics there. Uh, I had uh, I had about five between four and five weeks of training, and then uh, I shipped out on the uh, James G. Burney, which is a which is a freighter made by Henry Kaiser. She was 60 feet. She had a 60 foot beam, 420 feet long, and she drafted about 20 feet of water loaded. All right. And where were you on your way on your first trip? Well, on the first trip, we went to Palermo, Sicily. Uh, if you want to know... Where'd you leave? In New out of New York? Or? We left out of New York Harbor. I see. We picked up convoy, uh, and then we sailed... What were you carrying? We were carrying everything from Eisenhower jackets to tanks. I see. Yeah. And you started out, and you were going to Italy. We started, we went to uh, Palermo, Sicily. Right. And we left, we sailed up the coast of, uh, of America, up through Newfoundland. We met convoy there, then we run the ice pack out of Newfoundland. And for the reason we run the ice packs, when the, when the ice was out there, was the submarines didn't dare venture in there. And then when we hit open sea, we had destroyers and battle wagons and escorts to take us across. See. All right, and then what happened after that in Salerno? Well, where'd you go after that? Well, we first we we uh, went to the Rock of Gibraltar, and there the convoy was split to go different places in the Mediterranean. Let's see, and then uh, we stayed there for about a week to pick up another convoy, and we got our orders to go on through to uh, uh, Palermo, Sicily, and this was right after. George Patton, General George Patton, uh, liberated Palermo in Sicily to before he made the invasion into uh, Salerno into Italy. I see. And then uh, what happened then after you, you what, what what ship they stick? You know, where'd you go after that? Well, I stayed on I stayed on the James E. Burney for about nine months, and we were shuttling uh, we were shuttling. The first armored division uh, and the army boys and some of the CBs out of Africa, because that's when they uh, was driving Rammel out of Africa. Yeah. And as they, as those men became less needed there, we were bringing them up to Italy, into Naples, into into Palermo, um, and you know. Yep. We were just shuttling these guys back and forth. You were, they made you into a little troop. Uh, troop yeah, like. a troop carrier. Yeah. 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 All right. Then what went on in uh, your life as far as the Merchant Marine were concerned? Well, some of the things that I do remember is the USS Metapan. She was a United Freight 
Freightliner. Uh, she was a uh, yeah United. She belonged in the United Fruit Panamanian Fruit Liner, and she was carrying wounded and men going back to Lincoln for um, bivouac to rest up. Yeah. And off the coast of Africa, about 20 miles off the coast of Africa, she took a torpedo and she went down. And we were ordered, our ship was ordered to pick up any survivors, but not to break column to do it. So we didn't pick up any survivors. I saw no live survivors in the water. What, survive, what people of personnel I did see, they had on life jackets. They were floating face down, face up. But we picked up no survivors on my ship. And um, that's the only thing I can tell you about nice the SS Metal Pan. But she was carrying, she was carrying an army payroll. And I think since the war, uh, the salvage divers have went out and salvaged whatever they could offer her. I see. All right, and then go on and tell us what else happened in the Merchant Marine after that. Well, as I said, we shuttled between England and, and uh, Africa and, uh, and uh, Wales to, to the war zones up in Italy, northern part of Africa. Uh, up through the boot, up into Messina, at Messina, went up around in the Barry, you know. And then, uh, as the war dragged on, we were, we came home. I came home for 30 days. Uh, I picked up another ship, and again, we, we was loaded with everything from airplanes ready to fly to airplanes and crates ready, you know, to put in parts. Yeah. And food supplies, uh, cigarettes, um, you name it, anything that those soldiers over there had, wanted, the Merchant Marine got it over there. I see. And then you, you went back towards England again on that this I, new see. second ship? Or? Yeah, we went to Liverpool on that one. And then we picked up convoy, headed for Africa, and they were, Rama was still being driven out of uh, Africa. And that was my first, first uh, engagement with the enemy. And these were, uh, these were Nazi bombers that came over probably about nine o'clock at night, because it was dark, it was, it was dark. And we would pick them out with the searchlights. And I did see one or two get shot down, whether our ship shot one down or not, I can't tell you. We all said we did, but, hey, you know. Yeah. Uh, but that was my first first engagement in battle was in the Oran, Africa. Well, just keep telling us, you know, until you got out of the Marine, uh, the Merchant Marine, where else did you, uh, what else happened? Any interesting stories, anecdotes? Well, there's a lot of interesting stories, I guess. I, I met a soldier, his name was, uh, his name was uh, uh, Rupenthal, and we became very, very close friends. And it was his job to sign all the soldiers on aboard our ship and sign them all off wherever they uh, uh, disembarked overseas. And uh, uh, just a few months ago, I found out that he died with Alzheimer's disease, and, and it makes me very sad because we we really did become very close during the war. And uh, even though he was a soldier and I was a, in the maritime. Um, well, what about uh, now? You're getting close into 45. Your your explanation, right? We're getting into 45, and uh, then. The war was uh, in in Europe. Yeah, well, we had <clears throat> we had sailed along the coast there for two or three months, back, shuttling back and forth. And Eisenhower was getting ready to go into into uh, France, mm -hmm. yeah. and our ship. I'm <coughs> I'm reluctant to tell you the name of it because I was on several ships, <clears throat> but I think 
I think. It was a Katie O'Hearn, but I'm not sure. Yeah. She still was a she still was a Kaiser Liberty ship, and we were loaded with scrap iron, and we were in the we were in the port off of Liverpool, and we were the ships were, were out on the high seas and in port, and we were just mewling around. We weren't we weren't at anchor. We might have had an anchor halfway down or something like that, but we were just coasting with the waters because we were to go into, uh, when Eisenhower gave the word, we were to go around, around and get into the channel and head overseas. But the weather was terrible. Eisenhower had millions of men waiting to go. And with our ship, we were to go over and and sink it, scuttle it, and use it for a breakwater, breakwater, you know. Well, anyways, That's as, it was, as it happened, on the 5th of, I think it was the 5th, that was the day before D-Day. Yeah, in June. And uh, we were ordered to go home. A whole bunch of us was ordered to go home because, uh, because there were so many of us, it was afraid word was going to get out to the Germans that what was happening there, even though it was so cloudy, they couldn't, they couldn't see us from the planes. They, had, and they couldn't see us from any place, you know. But Eisenhower uh, gave the order, and uh, so we had a small convoy, and then we came back. To the United back, States? or the, Yeah, we the, came back to Norfolk. I see. And we emptied out of Norfolk. And then, uh, again, I came home for a couple days, and then I picked up another ship out of New York and sailed again. I see. So I wasn't in on the, in the evasion. I see. Close, but, but close enough. Close enough. Yeah. I wasn't there. I see. And then you, uh, while the Normandy and the invasion and into Europe, you were shuttling back and forth yeah. between New York and England, yeah. uh, bringing supplies yeah. and stuff. And every chance, uh, every time we could, see, we sailed up the coast and got up into off of Greenland and uh, Iceland, uh, uh, Greenland mostly, uh, to pick up that ice pack. And we would run the we would run the ice pack, so the submarines would leave us alone till we hit open seas. Then we hit open seas. Yes, the destroyers and the and the gunboats would take us across. Did, you know. did you was there a decrease in the amount of submarines as forty five came about? Oh or? yes, 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 yes. See, then it became yes. The big the big purge of submarines is over. I think the end of forty two, the beginning of forty three. Yeah. 90% of them were gone, but there was a few drifters out there. I see. And the boys that really got got in trouble was the guys on the Mermaid's Run. Because see, they run off the they run off the coast of Norway and Finland. Yeah, and they had the ja the German planes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We uh, all right. So then uh, you came home. Yeah. All right, what did you do after you got home? After the war. Yeah. After the war. Uh, well, let's see. After the war. I started working. I bought a truck off a of, uh, off Gardner over here, and I started working the lumber cans. Nice. And I worked the lumber cans for two or three years until West Virginia shut down. And then I went to uh, I moved to Argyle, and I drove truck over the road for a good many years. And when I gave that up, I went in construction, did that for a good many years, and as of right now, I've been supervisor of my town. I've been oh. there for uh, 10 years. Oh, great. Um, uh, did you get married and have children? Oh, yes. I married my high school sweetheart, Eleanor Lonis. She was the May Queen of the school. We had four children, three girls and a boy. My son is, uh, <clears throat> my son is uh, due to retire out of the Navy in, uh, in about four years. He's an air controller. He was on the Midway. Since then, she's been did commission and scuttled. Uh, he was on the uh, Enterprise, sailed on the Enterprise, and uh, he's a chief petty officer now. He lives in Jacksonville, Florida. My daughter, April Lee, was born here in, uh, at the Health Center, and she's a nurse in uh, Glens Falls Hospital, has been for the last 25 years or so. 
Now well, you said you what was your position in uh, Argyle? You're the supervisor, town the supervisor. Town supervisor. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, is there anything else that you'd like to tell us about? I mean, we're on tape. You could, it's your tape. Well, I'll tell you some interesting things that we did when we got ashore. They were interesting to me anyways. Let's take Mirrors El Kabir, Africa. Uh, not much has ever been said or written about that place, but it's a little town on the coast of Africa with not much, but underneath the sea there was a ledge that stuck out in the water for maybe a thousand feet, fifteen hundred feet. And the Nazis threw Polish and French slave labor built a small city down under the water and carved us all out. Well that was a submarine base, and the submarines would go down under that ledge, and you could bomb it forever, and you wouldn't even chip the paint. Oh, you know? I've never heard that. Yeah. And and that, uh, I mean, that was an oddity. And then they had, a, I didn't see any of this, but they had a lot of uh, pictures, paintings, and gold, and all that stuff. Yeah, that they were stealing out and yeah. putting in, the, putting away. And then again, in La Havre, France. La Havre, France. When we went into La Havre, I was in on that one. And I don't know whether we did it or the French did it, but it was right at the time just before Germany took over France and the French scuttled a lot of their ships and a lot of them were right in La Havre, La Havre Harbor. And La Havre was a, is a city that's built on the cliffs. And you, when you got into a a big elevator, a, a monstrous elevator, like maybe a 40 by 40 elevator, and you push the push the lever, pull the lever down. It was all steam driven, and these and cables would take you up to the next level. So you went up there, and you went on the next level. They had shops and things, and you go up the next level, right on top of a harbor. Now the Navy gunboats for five days, the Navy gunboats blasted. La Havre, France, and up in those cliffs. And again, with slave labor, the Germans had built into the rock these great excavations for the recoilless guns, and the guns would fire and go back, go back into the, go back into the cliffs. You know, this is right on top. And airplanes, our planes, bombed and bombed and bombed and bombed the darn things. And so when our boys went into La Havre. Unbeknown to us and everybody else, sure the Germans had the guns, but they only had about three or four rounds for each one. <laughs> so, so our boys went in. They met heavy competition, but there wasn't uh, the slaughter and the harvest that, that they expected. You know. I see. Well, good. I uh, thank you for coming down all the way from Mark. I we uh, appreciate I'm, it. I'm glad I did. And we got a good tape of you, and we'll. And you are. Pardon? Who oh, you are? Who are you? I'm George Beer. Oh, George Beer. Out in the Mediterranean.